Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Salvage Hunters. Hi, I'm Helen. Please you. Drew meets his match at a grand country house. Double my profit on that. You can take it now. For 2000 <laughs> You're going to make more profit than I am. And clashes with an ex-antique dealer. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 Rebecca finds out how Drew spends his days. So, uh, tough day at the office, yeah, darling. Yeah, it is another tough day at the office. And T gets a makeover in Norfolk. Dun, dun, dun. T, do you think, are they me? Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Oh, that's interesting. That's astonishing. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. Oh, wow, look at this, T. Trace it bang. Get in. He'll cross land. Whoa, it's all gone down my back. <laughs> there we go. This is fun, Drew. And water. Edge down. In his hunt for treasure. Go on, then. Hit me with a price. There's nothing he won't buy. I mean, it has been deactivated. With help from his wife, Rebecca, and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. <laughs> At Drew Pritchard's base in Conwy, North Wales. Hello, Drew Pritchards. Business is brisk. How many do you need? Seven, no. And with turnover high, it's a never-ending task to keep the showroom stocked. I think Rebecca's just something. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Finding new and interesting contacts is always a challenge for Drew and entails travelling the length and breadth of the country. I've never had to buy stock at the level I'm having to buy it now. We really do need to find a lot of stock every day, all day. Today, Drew is off on a four and a half hour drive northeast to the small town of Annick in Northumberland to see some property developers who own a country estate. We're going to see Aidan and Helen at Limington Hall. Right. I'm more into the um, architectural antiques. Helen's into the furniture antiques, and I use the architecture bits in building, and Helen furnishes them. So I do up to plaster level. Everything after plaster level is Helen. Limington Hall is a Grade Two listed Georgian manor house with a history that dates back to the 15th century. It was originally built for the Beadnell family for protection from lawless gangs known as Border Reavers, who plundered and stole from landowners along the Anglo-Scottish border. The raiders would just come down and pillage land and houses and cash and cattle and whatever else. So do you pillage antiques? Is that part I of the... I don't pillage uh... antiques, I purchase antiques, actually. We're raiders with a van and a checkbook. Yeah. We basically buy stuff all the time. Helen is eBay queen. We've got the house full, one house is full. I push them outside into the outbuildings, so the outbuildings are full as well. Not extreme hoarders, but getting there. No! <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Here we go. Look how good your job is. Look what you get to do all day. They're probably lovely people, and they make us a really nice cup of tea, and we'll get to wander around and look at some nice furniture. How's that? If we're really good, we might, we might even get some cake. Have a drizzle cake and some oh, tea. Oh, with a cup of tea. Oh. Oh. We're getting old, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Drew, how are you doing? Drew, hey, good nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Helen. Hi. Nice to meet you, Drew. Hi. Um, blimey, what a, yeah. what a house. <laughs> it's a magic yeah. place. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'd love to have a look around. Yeah. Would that be OK? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Feel free. Take you yeah. Which way? Upstairs? Yeah, we'll go yeah, upstairs. Okay. <laughs> That's quite a staircase. Yeah, these, these houses are made for sure, really. Is showing off as it is. Helen and Aidan start the tour in the medieval hall. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. Amazing, fabulous room. This is definitely the, the favourite room. Wow. wow. Is this the oldest part of the house? This is the oldest part of the house. It's one of the old peel towers. It's a wonderful room. The panelling's unusual, isn't it? It's come from... There's all sorts of age of panelling in there. Yeah, the panelling's yes. came from Lorraine in France from a place called Chateau Baradou. Yeah. I like yeah. that. I've done my house mostly. It's all 
yeah. salvage. It suits us, that's how yeah. we do it. Yeah. Well, it's cheap, yeah. isn't it? It's cheap, yeah. yeah. It's cheap. I mean, do you know what? I think it's just better. Yeah. I really yeah. just think yeah, it's better. Yeah, because everything's got a story, which is nice. Yeah. This is amazing. What else yeah. have we got to see? Drew has shown the secret doorway to the yeah. hall's former dungeon. Um, the, Newell's, the original Newell's staircase. Oh, wow, look at this, T. Here. Well, what's this? This is our oubliette. Blimey. Wow, an oubliette. So this is for the, from the French to forget. It is. This is where, uh, if the, the reavers or whatever were, were found rustling cattle or sheep, summary justice was administered. They dropped them through a hole in the ceiling yeah. into here. That was a barred window out into the fields. And they would forget about them. And it's not like being in prison where they're going to give you some water and some food. They drop you in there to die. That's it. So in that little oubliette, God knows how many Scotsmen pinching this, that and the other have been killed. Helen leads them into the parlour, where an imposing cabinet at the back of the room catches Drew's attention. This fantastic. Bookcase, or oh, cupboard, right, yes. or armoire, or whatever you want to call it. Yes. Yeah. That's quite something. That's yeah. the sort of thing I like. Oh, right. <laughs> well, it's been there. It was one of the first bits we bought when we bought the house. It's all pigeonholed. Lovely. Yeah. So needs one there. It's not really thick, so it's it's not an 18th century piece. Some of the veneer to the sort of shelf is broken off and there's lots of tea stains. It's just used, but do you know what? It's honest. It's incredibly honest. It's not had anybody mess with it, because a lot of those were stripped out and made into hanging space, or they'd take the top off and make one cupboard, and then they'd make a server out of the other or a dresser base. Isn't that an amazing thing? It's survived. This mahogany and pine deed cabinet from Dixon, Archer and Thorpe solicitors in nearby Annick was specifically made to store paperwork. Its size and provenance makes it worth around £7,000 after restoration. Lovely. Did you pay a lot for it? Not too cheeky a question. Um, I paid £1,000, uh, I think. £1,000? Would you like me to give you a little bit of a profit on it? Wow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's lovely, actually. The top obviously splits off from there. It does, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a nice piece. The reason why I like it is it's proportionate to this end wall, so when you come yeah. in, you've got a nice yeah. big piece in it. Wonderful. Real big masculine mm -hmm. lump, mm -hmm. but it's a big lump. I don't know, what would I pay for that today? Do you know what? I probably... I know. I think <laughs> if, if it was to there, or a little bit yeah. higher, probably mm -hmm. three and a half, four and a half thousand yeah. pounds in this state, you, you could it. split it, it so into that. Top. So if you can double my profit on that, you can take it now. For 2,000? Mm, yeah. No, I think 1,800 pound is going to do it, because I reckon I've got a grand to spend on it. Yeah. I'd probably say 19. 19. Going to make more profit than I am. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I'll tell you what, then, because of the state it's in, and it is in a rotten state. But you're looking at all this now as well down here, aren't you? That's character, yeah, surely. It's character. Yeah. It's not the story. It's missing. <laughs> yeah. Um, 1850, sold. OK. Lovely. Deal. Thank you very much. Okay. It's very unusual to be able to buy something from a house that's, you know, in the living quarters. They're usually completely off the radar. They're not for sale. So that's great. That... Super. Wonderful. Next is the pantry. So what have we got? Uh, what have we got here? Well, this is ah. the um, pa back part of the house, really. That's an unusual thing to have in your, in your larder. Well, I know, I know. Normally associated with fabric and uh, haberdashery. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's a um, spice cabinet, sort of. Like that's apple. deep, isn't it? How um, deep it is! Yeah. It's thirty. Look at that. That's the depth of it there. Look. Yeah. That's quite decent. It's got some heavy. It's got some plate glass in there as well. I think they're all. Um... It's a bit rough and ready. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this oak cabinet is practical in design and never seems to go out of fashion. In tip-top condition, it could sell for up to £1,200. I think it's in here for the sole reason that it fits nice yeah. and snugly under there. Is it for sale? Well, yeah, I can uh, find something else to go in there, yeah. OK. Um... I can hit you with one... Well, what do you want? I'd like you to come in first of all. OK, I'm going to go in with one price, and that's it. That's it, 400 quid. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
Salvage King Drew Pritchard is at Leamington Hall, along the Scottish borders in rural Northumberland, where he has successfully purchased one item. Super deal, wonderful. But owner Helen Ruff is a consummate negotiator. Drew wants this haberdashery cabinet for a once-only offer of £400. But will she accept? It's his bargaining face. Bargaining face, yeah. Um, I don't think that's going to be enough because okay. I probably yeah, would be looking at five. Yeah, no. Not for me. I'd probably said yes, but once I've seen that now, yeah. where it's bulging there, and then I'm going to spend £150 on it, plus yeah. our time, and then the polish. Yeah. So 400 I'll buy. The risk. I'll take the risk. Whatever, what whatever it comes out and it falls to bits, it's still mine at 400 quid. Um, okay, I'm happy yeah. with that. Lovely. Thank, Thank you very much. There you go. Tea, another nice big lump to put what, on the van. What he means is when we move it and it falls apart, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what he's saying. Exactly. That isn't that good? Yeah. This is turning into a very good day. I've managed to buy two great big lumps of furniture. One pretty spectacular and rare, the other one extremely saleable. Very good start. And the gloves are off. Everything seems to be for sale. Lovely. All right, where's next? Wow, so the dining room. Blimey, look at him. He sort of fits in, doesn't he, around here? Yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah. He keeps his, a his actual history was he came from a, a London zoo, died of natural causes, yeah. and was in the London History Museum for about That's 15 rich. years. Until they refreshed their lion yeah, display, yeah. yeah, and uh, he was the result of a purchase after probably more than two glasses of wine at a lunchtime auction. Really, <laughs> right, <I mean>. right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice to have. The lion they have in there, it is spectacular, whether you like it or not. Whatever you do with that, it's going to look good. Wonderful room. Yeah. Okay. No, nothing thing. in here for me. Right. That's no. fine. No. Yeah, next. Good. Next one. Yeah. No, not not, not for lion. No, no. I, I quite fancy an emu. <laughs> Having exhausted the search inside, they go to an outbuilding where Helen dumps her cast-offs. Oh, God. So in here? So embarrassing. So embarrassing. Yeah, some good scrap there. <laughs> yeah. It has been a valuable storage space for all my junk over the last, <laughs> over the last nine years, yeah. Okay. It's your typical shed. Everything's just thrown in there. There's work going on. It's a right mess. In other words, it's my idea of heaven. So everything in here is just not surplus. Yeah. Yeah. It's stuff that's been broken and. Yeah. That's interesting. Bobbin chair. Yep. Yeah. Are those casters original then? Yes. Porcelain. Yeah, porcelain caster. One of my best bits, that. Yeah. <laughs> Is that why it's in here? Yeah. With, the, with, the, with the bottom falling out. Yeah. Right, let's turn it upside down. It's a hessian bottom, isn't it? Well, it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a bit of TLC. Seen better days. Yeah. Bobbin refers to the turning or knob shapes carved into the wood. Popular during the time of Cromwell in the 17th century, the style was copied by the Victorians. Fully restored, it could be worth up to eight hundred and ninety-five pounds. Yeah, like that. What's that going to cost me then? What do you think? Are you looking at me? <laughs> yeah, what do you <laughs> think? To, I'll tell you how much it would cost to fix it, <laughs> <laughs> but to buy it wouldn't have a clue. Go on, make me an offer. <laughs> hundred quid. <sighs> I knew that face was coming out. I know, I know, I know, I know. I, know. I have to start somewhere. Quid. I have to start no, somewhere. No. Um, I'd be looking more like 230. Because you want to end up at 200. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen either. <laughs> <laughs> what if we end up at 175? You've got a deal at 180. Fine, sold. Thank you. Yes, lovely. Yeah. Look, and that's light tea. Nice. Right. 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 Normally, I'd have to trek across the country to a nice country house auction to buy a chair like that. So to walk in here and buy that, it's an absolute bonus. It really is. Yeah. The search at an end. It's now the thorny problem of how to dismantle the solicitor's cabinet. Extra troops are called for. At nine and a half feet tall, it's a very tight squeeze. My job is I'm an antique buyer for the business, and that's what I have to do. I have to keep the stock full. 
I have to keep the shop interesting and what I'm buying exciting for our customers. Bar the cupboard, which might be a little difficult one to sell, the rest of it will go quickly, really quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you really much. enjoyed it today. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you. Wonderful Thanks. stuff. Thanks. Fantastic. Enjoy. Fabulous yeah. house, and uh, I'll try and find somewhere as big as this place <laughs> to put those. <laughs> It's straight back to base in Conway to show off their purchases. Lots of stuff. A full van. Yeah, well, nearly full, but yeah. we've got some really, really good finds. Oh. There you go. Do you like that? It reminds me of bobbins. It is. Oh. It's called a bobbin chair. No. It is. Yeah, it's just lovely, classic sort of country house yeah. piece. Take this one off as well now, chaps. Now, watch the front here, inside there. It's a glass-fronted haberdashery cabinet. Drew's had an amazing day out. It was just fantastic to see a full van. And they're big items, big sort of masculine items. Wasting no time, Gavin is given the task of restoring the haberdasher's cabinet. Using stripper, he dislodges the old layers of paint. Sanding the grain takes it down to its original form. A couple of coats of stain matches the front, making it ready to sell. We're always desperate Later that week, Drew here. receives an email from an unknown contact, a retired antique dealer looking to part with some of his things. It's a risk, but Drew decides one worth taking. So he travels 125 miles south to Kington, in rural Herefordshire, in the hope of a good pick. Home to the ancient church of St. Mary's, this small medieval town lies along the banks of the River Arrow and is mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086. And we're off to see a guy called Paul Shepherd, and he's got part of his collection at his house. It's a little bit of a shanty town. I need to clean it up, but even I put things in sheds 20, 30 years ago, and I can't even remember what I put in there. And I, I'm amazing myself all the time. I've got about an acre of land, all told, I suppose, and it's a lot to manage. But he says there's so much of it, you're probably not going to be able to dig through. And he said the good stuff's right at the back, and you're not going to be able to get to it. Oh, dear. You like getting to the back, though, don't you? Well, I like getting to the back, but I don't like digging it all out afterwards. Down here on the left. Boat. Yeah, this is it. It's got to be proper hoarder. Every car he's ever owned parked outside the house. Hello. Oh, how are you doing? Very pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you at last. Yep. How are you right. doing? Hi, uh, Paul. Glad, glad you found it, it OK. No problem. Do you, want to, do you want to make a start? Yeah, where do we go first? Right, I'd, this one. I'd suggest this one here, right. yeah. It's a bit ramshackle, but and you'll have to right. cope with no lights. Got a torch here somewhere. Ah, yes, you, you'll need it. You'll need it in here. Ah. Even though the shed is packed to the gunnels, Drew soon spots a unique item. That's... Yeah. Oh, that could be a wonderful lamp, yeah, actually. Yeah, heat lamp. Yeah, but yeah, I think you can put a bulb in there yeah, and then... very easy to convert. Yeah, and it's a stunning, stunning-looking thing. You know, it's not bad, actually, is it? Thought to have many health benefits, heat lamps were very popular in the mid-20th century. After minor changes to the wiring, this 1950s version could retail for around £150. It's got a very nice look, and, yeah. you know, you can either repaint it or just polish it down yeah. to chrome. Yeah. How much is it? Go on, make me... It's the first thing you do, make me a sense of... Oh, come of on, offer. you're a dealer no, now. No, no, come no, on, no. Come on, come on. Come on, it's your day about. here. Come on, you It's make, your stuff. Make me an offer and we'll start haggling. Come on. We'll start haggling. Come on. They normally pay for it, 25 quid. Yep. There you Should go, put see? That. I want Fair. a handshake, that's it. Fair. It, it, was that easy or not? That was e very easy, there, actually. There very we go. Easy. Could I got it for less? Huh? Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. not. You <laughs> won't know. You won't know. I don't want to know, don't worry. <laughs> it's a great way to start the day, to just be able to get the first purchase out of the way like that. I'd looked at that and thought, yes, that can be made with a bulb in it into a fantastic-looking um, industrial-look piece, which would suit um, 
you know, a flat in Pimlico or, or Belgravia or anywhere like that. And I thought he's sure to be interested in that, and I was right. So we need to go just round that way. Right, OK. With acres to cover and so much stuff to rummage through, there's no time to waste. And it's all falling down. Blimey. Uh -huh. Let's, you. Let's go. In you go, Drew. We'll wait here. Oh, my good God. You've got so much stuff in here, Paul. Oh, it's nuts. It's actually a bit more than what I expected. A classic dealer hoarder. Oh. You're not going to get time to go through every single one, so you've got to do sort of a very quick preliminary search of every building. And, I mean, you will either like it or hate it. Uh, I'm intrigued now. <laughs> Contractors and funeral directors. I just thought that was quirky. It's on hardboard, I think. Ply. Too new. Too new. Look at the design facts. Yeah. I just don't, I don't have the customers for that. Look at the quality of the, the work. Yeah. And it's, it's just terrible. one of those odd things. Is it terrible? <laughs> uh, I mean, that is an amazing thing. No. Think about it. I'll think. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. 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 Next shed. Salvager Drew Pritchard is in rural Herefordshire, visiting ex-antique dealer Paul Shepherd at his rickety yard. He's managed to buy a lamp. Was that easy or not? That was very easy. But everything else has failed to impress. Next shed. Because you've yep. got loads, Next haven't you? Shed. There's a lot of stuff that has got no interest. It's just things that have broken in the house and he's chucked them in the shed. Not many real antiques at all. But who knows? That's what the job is. That's what I've got to do. I've got to find something. Is, is that tribal art? No. That's it. All right, right. Next one. Oh, yes. On, on Off we go. Onward and upward. I'll point out anything that I'd like the look of. How's that? Yeah, great. How is about that right? telephones? No. No. <laughs> like I said, I'll point out yep. anything I like the look of. How's that? Yep. Right, here we go. Um, now, Good. Shed. You step in here again. Right. Like everything here, a few hazards. Uh, OK, well, I'll just carry on having a look through then. OK. An MOT sign? No. 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 A little bit of a better look at these. There's a pair of those. There is, the other one's just there. Yeah, and they've got a bit of age as well, they have. That one's under repair to the seat. Is the other one? Yeah, it's been repaired or it's split underneath. And when this, if you'd strip them, would you? No, God no. Crafted between 1910 and 1920, these beach stools came from a school science lab and are desirable because of their simple utilitarian design. They could fetch up to £125 each. The floor's okay. uneven. But... Don't worry. How much are they, Paul? Uh, what, 20 quid? 20 quid. That's going to be a little bit too much on these. Um... No, 20 quid. Right. 20 quid. Shake on it. Done. Marvellous. That's Tea. it. I was surprised that Drew took an interest in the stools, but then again, there is beauty in anything that's handmade, and I think that's why he was drawn to them. Right. Um... Very good. So where's next? Right, we need to go over here now, and this is really into wild territory. Um, so watch where you're stepping. Oh, there's another shed here. Well, yeah. anything in there? And that, that's crammed full as well, but the roof has gone. I'll have a quick look at your Land Rover, though. It's a Series 2 Safari. It's quite decent panels on it. What is it, 58, 59? Uh, yeah, there's, it needs a lot of money spent on it. Oh, you can see I've got all the seats there, but... He put those in. old Jaguar seats in it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, or some old car seats. Yeah. There'll be some panels for somebody. Doors. There's, there's I think these spares. rear doors here. It has yeah. a lovely aroma yeah. inside as well. It's a sewn aroma. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They do, don't yeah. they? Are you not going to make Rebecca's Ooh. day by buying it? No, it's a safari, so quite a desirable model, but in the condition it's in, it's not my type of thing. But somebody should save that one because all the panels and all the bits are all there. One more place? Yeah, I've there? got one more thing in mind, you know. <laughs> 
Right, I think this will be, be the last little bit now. All right. And uh, one or two things here that might just be of interest. Oh, a lot of vinyl. Oh, I've got... A lot of vinyl. Hundred. I've got thousands. Ah, that. Ah, right. I haven't that... seen any of that in a while. No, it's... That was, again, something... I don't know whether I want to sell that or not. This is... Do you know what that is? Um, it's very unusual. That's why, that's why I'd kept it. It's called tramp art. Ah. Classical poses, you know. Professor Brook McFadden, classical poses, 1893. Which must reflect on the age of it. The only downside yeah. is this, this modern piece of timber that... Well, not modern, but later piece of the timber that's been put in. Yeah. No, I guess... It's unusual, it's all hardwood. Yeah, and it's... I mean, just think, how long would it take, take you to, to do that? To, to do you see how this is constructed? This is yeah, layered. layers, yeah. It does have a distinct following and a very, very distinct look. And also, my American clients like it a lot. They really, really like it. More common in America from the mid-1800s to the Great Depression, tramp art is known for pieces made from discarded materials and crafted by untrained artists. This picture frame could sell for around £200. Well, what do you want for that, then? Uh, you'd have to give me a sensible offer on that, cos it's that's one of those things... You give me a sensible offer and I'll contemplate it. 50. 50. Tell you what, leave it sat there, let's carry on going round mm. and let me contemplate that. OK. Um, what figure did you have in mind? OK. I, I, you, could I, keep, I, you could keep the picture. <laughs> Do you know what I am? I probably wants the <laughs> I am a deltiologist, that's what I started out as. What's that? Deltiologist mm. is a postcard collector. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, there you, okay. You've learned something I today. Have, I, 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 I said, so if you go see an old dealer, you learn something. Yep. So, mm, OK, no. Do 60 on it and we'll have a deal. Sold. There we are. For right. the postcard, if nothing else. No, yeah, you, that's with the postcard. Just great. Again, a good reason why I do this job, to find something like that. It's been up here so long. That thing yep. up there. Do you want me to get up there? No, no, no. So I pass that to Drew. Thank you. That's it. Yeah, just get oh, aye, that's great. Hang on. Oh. Lovely. You right there? Yep, so I'm using your shoulder to... And then so that's how it clamps up. It's very basic, isn't it? I love that. Just needs a bit of fettling, doesn't it? In full working order and with a new shade, this 1950s retro timber lamp could retail for up to £300. OK, I like that. Conditions all right, not wonderful, but um, go on then. Right, now you're the expert on angle poise, so come on. This isn't an angle poise. I really like the frame. I don't like the top. You know, go on, hit me with a hit me with a figure. Twenty-five quid. Yeah. Okay. That's more than, more than fair. It is actually. More I, I, than I was fair. thinking along the same line. His offer to me for for that, I immediately thought, yeah, that's very fair, and he knows his stuff. Thank you, Drew. Tom, thank you very much. I need some more boxes, T. It's your favourite frame. Yeah. Cheers. Here you go, Drew. So. It was an odd way Paul decided to do the deals today. He sort of asked me what I wanted to pay for each individual item. Him being a dealer, I'd expect him to come the other way round. That's usually how it's done. I always had a figure in my head, and it was, strangely enough, the same figure that he came out with. And, and that, that's the unusual thing today. Paul, yep. fantastic it's day. It's been an absolute pleasure meeting Thank you. Thank you very much. I've, in, I've enjoyed myself, and we've got a couple of items that I really love. Well, that's the main thing, isn't it? Mm. That's the main thing. Let me see you, let me see you out. Thanks. For... Drew is a wonderful man. The saddest thing is there wasn't enough time for him to see everything because you can't get at it, and I would dearly like him to come back again. Mm. Bye, oh. So, well... Uh, Hmm. Odd collection of stuff. Aladdin's cave? No. A couple of the bits we got there are actually really interesting. That tramp art frame, yep. really interesting. At base in North Wales... Do you want to come out, Ed? Come on. Drew's ringing the changes and taking Rebecca out on a pick to a nearby country house. 
It's just a short drive south to Langochlan, Denbyshire. It is quite a large house, and there's a manager for the house now, and they have asked us to come in and have a look at if there's anything we'd like to buy, because they want to have a clear out. Trevor Hall is tucked away in the secluded Dee Valley and sits on an ancient site dating back to the 1300s. It's one of Wales's best examples of a Grade One listed Georgian mansion. My name is Janet Evans, and I've taken over the running of Trevor Hall here in Llangollen. Although the property has an amazing facade, the inside isn't quite what you would expect because the owners were into the music industry. This is a normal house call, even though it's quite a grand house. Um, but it's got that difficult thing where we're having to deal with a third party, not directly with the owner. So anything we make a bid on or are interested in buying, they have to ring the owner. Welcome to Trevor Hall. Janet. Yeah. Drew, how are you doing? Pleased to meet you. I've got my wife Rebecca with me. And Enzo, you don't mind dogs, do you? Not at all. Welcome, Hello, dogs. Janet. Hi, Rebecca. Nice to meet and you. And you. Wow, this is this... amazing. Come on in and have a look. Great. Love okay. to. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow, I love the uh, chimney piece. Look at that. So that's the Trevor family crest, I'm presuming. Yes, I should imagine it is, yeah. These are wonderful. These are almost medieval in style, these, aren't they? The unusual thing about this is, you see, it's all plain now. Mm. In the day, it was probably painted. Very really? Very gaudily all over, yeah. Wonderful. So, I mean, you've got some elements of the original house still here, then, because, I mean, you've got a Victorian floor down. This is from the second half of the 19th century. It's made in Birmingham, this type of tile. A real strange mix of styles. <laughs> you know, 18th century chimney pieces to sort of, you know, Indian thrones. Yes, yeah, it's and there's much one. more to come when you go round. You'll enjoy it, I'm sure. Next, Janet takes them to the parlour. I love the Space Invaders machine. Yeah. Does that work as well? Yes, it does. Does it? Yes. Do you want to see? Yeah, go on. Go on. Yeah, yeah. I used to play this. Did you? I'm very competitive. <laughs> so, uh, tough day at the office, yeah, darling? Yeah, it is another tough day at the office. Is this how you spend all your days? Yeah, always. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'd have definitely beaten T on that. He's rubbish at things like that. But Rebecca, she's absolute mustard. And any games, I never win. Well, there's nothing in here for me. Okay. Um, so enough. if we went through, I don't know what's through Into that way. Can we have a look snug. that way? So this is the what, what's this? Is Another this snug. snug. Uh -huh. Wonderful shutters. Yeah. Ah, now. What's Drew found? Mm. Well, I can't buy them, unfortunately, <laughs> but these tiles here are by an incredibly influential designer called William de Morgan. Wow. And it was all to do with that sort of the, the late 19th century arts and crafts movement, aesthetic movement, and they're also very, very valuable. Gosh. But they're part of the listing of the building, I'm sure, so you yes, can't take yes. them out. But now you know you've got to look after them now. Yes, yes. yes. I'm, I'm nervous <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't well, just leave them where they are. They're fine. They're not going anywhere. Yeah. They're not going anywhere, but they're oh, beautiful. No. Anyway, no, nothing in here for me, I'm afraid, no, apart okay. from those, obviously. Which you can't take. <laughs> Which I can't Which have. Can't have. No. <laughs> All the furniture downstairs is either reproduction or sort of either Indonesian, Chinese, whatever. It's not really my type of thing. I'm looking for genuine, real country house artefacts. Not a promising start, but there are more rooms upstairs. So this is the four poster bedroom. It's um, it's it's all reproduction furniture in here. Mm -hmm. uh, so nothing for me. This room here is known as Highland Fling. Oh, wow, I can see why. <laughs> so I was hoping you might like this, Drew. Uh, mm, I sold my Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to sort of show Rebecca the reality of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, so we're wandering around and there's nothing here to buy. I've got a horrible feeling we might be going back with an empty van. The third floor is Drew's final chance to make the day a success. So this is the Chinese room in oh, here. Drew. Oh, wow, this is lovely. Oh, now this I do like. Yeah, 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 yeah I like this one This is really well. lovely, I'm... but it is difficult to shift. I think it's my favourite. It's hard to sell. I think this is actually an old. These are old pieces, actually. They are, yeah. 
it was left in the house along with the Chesterfield downstairs. The brown Chesterfield yes. down in the hallway. Yeah. Well, I noticed that the second I walked in, and it the one thing I've seen here all day that I keep going back to in my head, I really like it. I buy a lot of leather furniture, mm -hmm. and particularly Chesterfields and Chesterfield armchairs. OK. Um, is it something that's for sale? Well, we can go and have a look. Depends on the price, obviously. Sure, but I'd like yeah, to see it. I'd like to see it. I've already noticed it needs a bit of okay. work, but we can discuss that when we get down okay. there. OK. Perhaps at the right price, the Chesterfield will make the journey worthwhile. I was quite surprised that Drew didn't mention it when he first entered the hall because it was right by the dining table. Um, but obviously, I suppose he was being polite. Don't you think it would be quite rude if I just walked in and go, oh, hi, nice to meet you, can I buy your sofa? I had to sort of, you know, you've got to be polite. I'm in somebody else's house looking at their furniture. Here we are, the Chesterfield. Yeah, this is um, really, really good looking. This is where they always get ripped. See, that's the colour it would have been there. And it's had a big repair over there, and this one's had a repair. See where it's been stitched over the top there? No, I didn't notice that. Yeah, see that there? The bad news is the damage has been repaired in the past, but it's still a great-looking piece of furniture. This tufted, well-worn, leather-button Chesterfield is a timeless English classic. In need of some minor repairs, it could fetch around £1,800. So it's sort of... It's good, but it's, it's a bit rough. That said, I still like to buy it, so I wonder what sort of price you'd like for it. Well, what would you like to offer for it? Well, I'm going to offer as little as I can get away with, clearly, but it's... Uh, <laughs> so, it's, uh, shoot. Shoot. Um, I'm thinking sort of 750 I do know that when we were talking earlier, it was more in the thousand realm. Drew Pritchard is at Trevor Hall, a manor house deep in the Welsh countryside. Yeah, this is um, really, really good looking. He's made an offer of £750 on a Chesterfield. Estate manager Janet has gone to phone the owner to see if she's prepared to accept Drew's price. It is nice, and the colour's perfect. It could only be better if it was black and in this condition. So we'll see, we'll see what she's got to say. I saw you look at it as soon as you came I in know. the front door. No, it's lovely. Right it's lovely. I've got to be able to leave here with this today. It ticks all the boxes for the sort of thing I like to buy and my customers want me to buy. So I've just spoken to Mrs Parker, the owner of the house. Yeah. And she said she'd be prepared to let it go for a thousand. It's got to be a thousand. It's got to be a thousand. Absolutely no less. No less. The colour's that nice, even with the with the damage. I'm definitely going to buy it. Thank you. Brilliant. Now we're great. Yeah, I wonderful. will need a hand getting it on the van. Have you got a, a man handy? I have my husband here. Great. So He'll he need can, to give me a hand. Yeah, it's not the heaviest one in the world, but it's also not that yeah. light. But no, lovely, lovely, lovely. We'll get this tail get down. What I have got now is a superb, fashionable cool sofa, which I will have people beating the door down to buy. Yeah. Much appreciated. It's lovely Janet, to meet you, Janet, Drew. Nice to meet you, too. Mrs Parker and I had talked about removing it from the hall, and Drew's just come and bought it, which is wonderful. <laughs> well, I've had an absolute ball. Did you enjoy it? I've loved it. Could I not have a natter with tea and see if I can come out on some more? You can do. I've got nicer do. legs than tea. <laughs> Enzo's got nicer legs than tea. And back at Conway. Oh, good, good. Good, good. Tray bomb. The much maligned tea is ready to unload. Careful. OK, I'm going to put that on the set. So it's a uh, 50s and or a bit later, horsehair stuffed, Button seat Chesterfield in beautiful distressed condition. That's lovely, Drew. Isn't that lovely? This was the best thing in the house and we bought it. Drew's back on the road again with regular sidekick T, and he's making the four and a half hour journey east to Norfolk in the hope that a long shot will pay off. We're going to see a guy called Pete at Gillings of Dis, right? It's not a usual sort of place. 
it's MOD military surplus. But I've heard he'll sort of design things for his own house, and it's very unusual. Worth a visit, so let's get there. Pete has been in the salvage business for 50 years. I've always tried to make something out of nothing. Uh, I wouldn't call it design, I would call it necessity. Just using something twice, really. So if I could see an idea in making something and making it useful, I would do. Hello. Hello. They meet in Pete's flat above the yard. Yep. Drew. Drew, how are you doing? How are you doing? You all right? Good. Right, Pete, tea. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for letting us uh, come over. It's not our usual fare, really, military surplus. Okay. But um, I can see already that there's a little bit more to it. And it's a good look. I like what you're doing. It's cool. Yeah, some of it came out of necessity, you know. We didn't have all the money in the world when we started building, so you have to make use of things the best way you could. Yeah, and that sometimes turns out the best things, doesn't it? Yeah. Like that, yeah. The, the hood there. Of well, the, yeah. That's great. I definitely wanted to keep that because that Morris Thousand Traveller, yeah. uh, we moved down there in it and it was absolutely skin. So that had to, some you've got, had to you've stay. Got to, you've got to keep that, haven't you? That's <laughs> irreplaceable. So what we're here buying, yeah. um, what's for sale? Is it just the stuff in the yard? Is there anything well, goes? Well, the oldest saying in the world is everything's for sale. See that retro mirror sort of thing that, at the back? That's good looking now, isn't my it? My dad, yeah. he bought that from Venice when I was a kid. <laughs> I couldn't pull it, really. But you know what? I think it's cool now. It, well, of course, it's it? retro. Well, that I like. It's got a price ticket on it, has it? Has it? I think that's when I bought oh, it. Oh, in so that was a long time ago. Oh, that's quite a long time ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what? Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks in fairly good nick, actually. Yeah. It's not bad, is it? Made in the 1930s, this XMOD medical operating room trolley was taken from RAF Honington in nearby Suffolk and would have stored surgical instruments. It retails for around £300. It's not bad, is it? What, um, what are they going to cost me? Well, a thing like that now would probably be 200 quid. OK. Um, what about um, going to do it for 175 Well, I ain't going to argue with you. You know, it's neither here nor there, is it? Up to you. Don't have to. Yeah, well, I don't really want to sell anything in here, but, you know, I don't mind. You're here, you've made a journey, you made the effort to get here. Yeah. I'd like to give you a start. I'm keen to buy. Go on in. One seven five, we'll have that. There you go. Sure. Brilliant. Exactly the sort of thing that I want to buy. And in nice nick as well. It's been overpainted, but that doesn't matter. Good looking. It's for sale. Bought it at the right money. Very happy. Drew has led to a storage area and immediately spots a wooden stool. What I do like the look of it was this. Have you got any more of these? No. Um, I should have, cos I burnt about 120 of them. They came out of HMS Games. You're joking. Oh. But it was years ago and they weren't worth oh, anything. Man. People didn't want them then, but I just saved one for myself. Oh. But it's just nice old things, aren't they? Yeah. I know. I just think they're lovely. They're yeah. really tactile. Look at the split yeah. seat there around that knot. That's nice. HMS Ganges was a Victorian Royal Navy training ship. The stool is made from elm and beech and has sleek, tapered legs. With such provenance, it could be worth up to £275. I think I sold the last lot I had for half a crown each. Really? <laughs> oh, you've had them a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to put you in the picture, but no, I just kept that one myself. So is this not for sale, then? Is it well, you know, and everything for sale. Oh. Only now. All right, give us a price. 50 quid. Fine, sold. There you go, that wasn't too hard. Sorry. <laughs> Not what I expected when we got here. I thought it was just going to be military surplus, a big warehouse full of old boots and bits of tanks. But no, Pete's got a good eye. So, yeah, can we have a look at the yard? Sure. Some of the warehouses? Of, yeah, different stuff out there. Let's have a look. OK. Show us through. What's this? It's a one-man submarine. You're joking. Look, it's got the propeller and everything. Wow, what a thing. So what age is this, then? Oh, I think it's wartime. Yeah, I think it's wartime as well, looking at it. Yeah. That's a rare thing, isn't it? I think if you found a museum, you could ring the bell with that. But to you, today, 400 quid you bought it. 400 quid. No. <laughs> oh, like your chopper. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> 
I had one of these when I was a kid, a black one. <laughs> oh, T, we can get you some new clothes. Ah, do fun. you sell any camouflage shorts? <laughs> I do. Yes. Brilliant shop, Pete. I like it. I haven't been to a proper army surplus place in years. Ah, is this what we're talking about? Dun, dun, dun. T, do you think, are they me? Changing room there. <laughs> They're you. I think it's an improvement, T. Do you, th do you think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can try those on too. I'll buy it. If they suit you, I'll buy them for you. How's that? Lights I'm looking for. Okay. Oh, I want lights if you've got any. Old signage, quite like some old signs. When I come to these places, the only military bits that really work well for me is sort of military standard furniture. Uh, any sort of cabinets and storage and lighting and seating. As long as it's older stuff, it's really saleable. Did you see these lampshades? Because I do get thousands of these. Yeah, I've had these in the past, and um, they're a bit tricky. You have to buy a flat plate for both sides for the bulb holder. What about if I had the holders as well? What are they? They're cheap, aren't they? But, pound, I mean, pound a piece. They're, they're not cheap, are they? They're good value. They're very good, good value. value. That's Excellent it, yeah. value. Very good salesman they... told me that. Nothing, it's never cheap. Nothing cheap. It's good value. No, nothing in here. OK. Coming down here, taking a bit of a long shot, really, to come and buy stuff from a military surplus place. But I've met Pete. Pete's just not a standard dealer in, you know, buys it X, sells it Y. He has a go at all sorts. He's got a bit of an eye as well. He likes different things. He likes the things I like. So maybe he'll think of me first. That's the essence of the job. And he's a good guy, good fun, I enjoyed it. OK, then, I think we're done, are we, Pete? We've seen I everything? Think so, yeah. I think so, yeah. Been a pleasure, nice to meet you. Been nice enjoyed meeting it. you too. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Good. Right, Take care. See, See ya. Yeah. Bye. Drew and me, I guess, we've grown up in, in this stuff and uh, got a living out of it over the years. We're all looking for that bit of treasure that you're going to find that no one else knows what it is. Yeah, probably the best thing about today is meeting Drew and finding out the sort of stuff he sells. He knows what he's talking about, so now I know him, maybe we can uh, do some business in the future. There you go, so what do you think of that today? That was a very interesting day. You enjoy it? Yeah, it was a good laugh today. Well, I'm yeah. glad you enjoyed yourself today. I did. <laughs> don't ever say I don't buy you anything. <laughs> I don't know where they've We just come. need to camouflage the rest of you. <laughs> In the warehouse, saddler John Helm is working on the Chesterfield from Trevor Hall. To repair the rip, a mending technique using waxed knitting thread and a curved saddle needle does the trick. Large holes can only be fixed with a new leather patch. And it's ready for the boss's finishing touch. The difference between a good and a bad Chesterfield is huge. Colour choice is number one, and then the wear. So look at that seat come up there now, it's beautiful. That's amazing, like a big bar of chocolate. I'd love to own this. Perfect. Done. 